So pretty much when you play Gogeta, the question you have to ask yourself and you have to understand is how nasty are you? What up, Joe Crew? It's me, Joku, and I'm doing a uh, Gogeta playthrough today. This is a custom leader from David Andresano from Facebook. You should check him out. I'll have a link to his website in the description below. He makes beautiful custom leaders here. Awesome, awesome custom leaders. Uh, then I got uh, my sleeves from Your Playmat and my Playmat from Your Playmat also. But I'm just gonna do a run through of the deck, talk about some things that could be helpful. Uh, it's a pretty interesting deck, lots of different builds for it. I'm using the build that the guy that topped in the EU used. Um, so I'm using right now just to rep games, I think it's a pretty strong list, but um, I'm just gonna go through and play it and show you guys how it works. So so this is my play mat from your play mat. The sleeves are from your play mat. There's a link in the description below. You can save yourself some hot cash by using my promo code. Um, when I shuffle Gogeta, I like to look through and just make sure that all my cards aren't stacked on top of each other, that they're kind of spread out and somewhat randomized. So I usually just leaf through the whole deck and look and just see, okay, like I don't have the same copy of the same card everywhere. Um, and then once I do that, then I'll shuffle the deck. I think Kai is also a good option as a secret rare in this deck. I mean, I think Pan is a good option as a secret rare in this deck. I'm using Kai. I think Kai helps Gogeta with board control, but in most matchups, I think Pan is actually a better pick, but I'm gonna use Kai just for the sake of keeping the deck the same as the guy from the EU that topped. This is his list pretty much. So pretty much when you play Gogeta, the question you have to ask yourself and you have to understand is how nasty are you? That's basically what it comes down to because you're just milling your deck and if you mill well, you will do well and depends what you see. In terms of what you want in your opening hand, you really wanna see your fusion targets. That's like the main thing that you want. So anything that isn't a fusion target or like a secret rare, I keep super combos also. But in this opening hand, we have one fusion piece, one fusion. So pretty much everything else here I would send back. Ideally, you want a thwarting in your hand on turn one. Turn one thwarting is an amazing play if you can pull it off. And there's a lot of other stuff you can sequence out that works really well if you're able to get that in hand. So we're just gonna keep the one fusion piece because we wanna be able to hit a fusion each turn because when you hit fusions, they draw and they help you build your board. So you really wanna be fusing as much as possible um so there's four and our fifth and we got wow i'm nasty all right that's a good hand so next we're gonna set our life out four and four so i think in this list it's three mira and one smoke i was playing four smoke when i was playing this um but i'm gonna go ahead and roll i'll roll for gogeta first and then whoever my opponent is so gogeta rolls a 10 and my opponent rolls an 11, so I'm gonna be going second. So they're gonna charge, pass, I'm gonna draw for turn, uh, choose something to put in my energy. Now, you really do kind of want uh, Goku or Vegeta in hand if possible. Don't really want to charge or thwarting. Depending on the matchup, you may be fine charging this if you're not going to be protecting your life. And I'm not going to be playing super defensively. I'm going to show more aggressive play. So I'm going to charge this turn one. The first thing you want to do, you can either swing to draw or you can mill. Um, but if you're going to mill, you got to ask yourself, how nasty are you? And let's see how good I am at this game. So we're going to mill five here. One, pretty bad. Two, okay. Three, all right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty nasty. We have our fusion targets right there. Four, all right, can we get a Goku or a Kai? Five, all right, not so bad. We got our pieces for our fusion. So basically, we milled out a 30K Xeno Goku and Xeno Vegeta. So these can be used to fuse from the warp. And here we're going to swing at leader, auto draw for the swing and that's probably gonna be 10 damage there. Now, really you wanna go into fusing, so you're gonna play thwarting on turn one, and these by the way you play thwarting is you pay one energy, you choose a Goku and Vegeta and your warp of the same energy, put them in your drop area, and once per turn off your leader, when you play a Xeno Fusion, uh, you get to draw a card. 
So you're gonna draw a card off that and then you'll swing with thwarting. If they have something on your board, you warp it and then you double strike them. Uh, pass turn and they're gonna go into their turn. At this point, they're gonna be attacking. They're probably gonna try and pressure your Gogeta to kill it, but they may not. I mean, it doesn't matter if they do because you have another one in hand. So let's just say they hit the leader for one hit. So we'll take that. And then it's gonna be our turn. So we're gonna charge. Since we're simulating here, we're not really gonna be playing as if they're destroying our hand. So I'm just gonna charge this Deborah. Um, a good thing to do here is to get your pieces out to kind of stop them from countering. So another good play is you can play this Goku right out. And when you play this Goku, it's gonna pressure them from countering your thwarting swing. Now, if they counter the thwarting swing, they're gonna to have to pay the tax of warping a card. So he's a good idea to just play right away there. If you're playing blue, it's a good idea to establish Vegeta True Fighting Spirit first, first turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my leader skill. Let's see how nasty I'm at this game. Mill one, it's pretty good. Two, all right, I'll take it. Three, I'm nasty. Now can we get a unison? Four and unison, nope, but that's good because Trunks comes back to your hand when he's milled off your deck, so that's great. It's a really good mill. Um, at this point, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards in our warp, and we can play the Marvelous Might Gogeta but I would probably just kind of go in at their leader and see what's going on. I usually don't take life um, unless I really need to in a position. You don't, I think with Gogeta, you don't just take life every time. I think you take life based on what your opponent is doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and swing leader um, and I'm gonna draw the card and I'm not gonna take the life here because there's no way I'm gonna awaken this turn. I would rather awaken next turn because turn three awakening is pretty strong. You can play multiple fusions and do a lot of stuff. Um, and I'll probably just leave this Goku here on the board. Now, another thing you can do is say they're at seven life from this hit somehow. They negated the first, or they'd probably be at seven from the last turn. Maybe they negated the thwarting swing. So let's put them at seven life. This puts them to six. Now we really wanna take them from five to four. So the next thing you can do is you could swing with True Fighting Spirit and take the life so that's going to be 15 and from here you can combo off a trunks which will put it at 20 which makes it a lot more likely that they'll take that hit so when that goes to 20 this is going to go to the drop area they're probably going to take that hit and then you can overwhelm for trunks for three and swing again to try and put them to five and if that puts them to five then you're good to send them to three with thwarting or you're going to force the negate out of their hand uh, at that point, I think it would probably be good to just play Marvelous Might just to set up for your following turn. So pay one energy for Marvelous Might and grab your fusion targets from the warp. We haven't played a fusion this turn, so we're gonna draw for playing the fusion this turn. And then we pass turn. Trunks is gonna come back to hand and they're gonna go into their turn. Let's say somehow they figure out how to kill Thwarting and they probably wanna kill this also. He's a nuisance. So let's say they kill that as well and maybe they deal a damage. So let's call that the offensive turn that we're against. And now it's back in our turn, so draw for turn. We see unison. Really, ideally, you wanna play your unisons out of your warp off of Kai, so there's not really a point in playing unison from hand, I think. I would probably charge this unison. I might be wrong, I don't play Mira that much. I usually play the other guy. So first thing that we wanna do here is create some pressure for them to have to deal with if they are gonna be dealing with it. So I would probably just go ahead and do the leader effect to, to mill, because I wanna see a unison in my warp. So let's see, and as soon as we see a unison, we're gonna stop milling. So this is two, three, four, and can we see a unison? No, no unison. All right, so at this point, probably want to go into awakening on this turn so let's say we're gonna play another thwarting here so we can pay one all right first i probably swing with marvelous might so swing with marvelous might they may do something they either negate it or they take the hit um once you swing with marvelous might use um marvelous might's effect to pay one send him to the bottom of the deck and play a Goku and a Vegeta from your warp. 
So we want to play these guys because they both punish a lot of stuff that is meta relevant right now. Once you get them out, then you're good to swing with your leader. When you swing, or you wouldn't swing with your leader yet, I'm sorry. So the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna play uh, another thwarting. When we play thwarting, we're gonna grab our Goku and Vegeta. So here's a Vegeta and here's a Goku. Send them to our drop and we will draw for playing that fusion. And now we swing with our leader. When you swing with leader, or probably swing with thwarting first, actually, in case they have anything to tap thwarting. So you just swing with thwarting. They're gonna have to deal with that double strike. You warp something on their side. And now we can swing with our leader. When we swing with our leader, we will auto to uh, draw card, take the life. Uh, here we can awaken, now that we're at four. Draw a card and untap one energy. And that's gonna be 15K at them. We wanna check how many cards we have in our drop area. So there's three, six cards in our drop area here, which we know sets us up to play the big Goku, which we don't have in our hand. So we're not gonna be playing that, but that's gonna be 15 there. And then depending on the board state here, like you can start going in with these guys. Um, if you need to play defensively, you probably want to leave an energy up. So we're going to just opt to play the defensive play here. And if we are playing on the defensive, we would probably want to set up. Well, we have one kind of gate and that maybe uh, we would just overwhelm here for trunks to get our pieces back into our warp. And when our pieces go back into our warp, we can swing with trunks just to add some pressure. After swinging with trunks, then probably um, if they were to play some counterplay and play something out, we can either play the blocker or we could set up for putting more pressure with Marvelous Might. I would probably opt to play Marvelous Might. And now that we're awakened, we haven't drawn for our fusion on our awakened side. So we grab a Goku and Vegeta, put them in our drop from our warp and draw a card for playing a Union Fusion. And then I probably just leave Marvelous Might in active mode. Um, Trunks is gonna come back to hand, pass turn. And on their turn, they're probably gonna swing at thwarting. Uh, I probably wanna defend thwarting here. So let's say we combo off. It's always safe to kind of combo these guys off. Um, and Kai is also a good combo. Also don't mind filling our drop up, so we have more overrealm. So let's say we save thwarting on that swing and then we're gonna kind of gate another one of their swings to get rid of one of their battle cards. And maybe they deal a damage to us through something here. Right, we'll say we manage to save the damage. You really wanna have four life for your kill turn because you can buff your board a lot more. Um, but let's say they pressured some more cards out of our hand. So, you know, the Trunkses and the True Fighting Spirits are good to combo off. So let's say we comboed that off to save stuff and we're gonna go into our turn now. So draw for turn. There's our smoke, which we would have loved to have milled. Um, smoke is okay to actually just hard cast though. And since we have two trunks, we don't need another trunk. So we'll charge one trunks. Um, this is gonna come back in active mode and the first thing I would do here is actually just play smoke for one to draw a card. So we're gonna play him for one, minus one, put him in the drop area. And then we get to look through our deck for a Dragon Ball. We don't have any Dragon Balls, but it gives us an opportunity to see how many super combos we have left. There's two super combos in here and we have one of the six drop Gokus. I think there's another six drop Goku in here also. Yeah, so we have two six drop Gokus and it would be great to get one of him and two super combos and one unison left in here, which means that there's one unison in our life because we've charged the unison, we haven't milled any and we just killed the third. So one of our life is gonna be a unison. So we'll shuffle that up, give it a little cut. And then after you play smoke, you draw a card and your opponent chooses one card in their warp and sends it to their drop. So perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. It's great to see that. We have enough cards in our drop area to play that. So this is gonna be a really big turn. It's probably gonna be our kill turn. You wanna check how many cards in hand your opponent has. And then we're gonna kind of plot out how we're gonna do this. So the first thing I would do is swing with thwarting to make sure that they don't tap him somehow because this is gonna get rid of maybe a blocker and put some pressure on. So we'll swing with thwarting. Uh, the next thing to do here is to swing with Marvelous Might. 
Um, now, if they negate either of these, that's gonna be problematic for them. And something you actually could do, if you, if you suspect they're gonna negate the thwarting swing, before you even swing with thwarting and before you swing with Marvelous Might, you can just pay one energy to send Marvelous Might to the bottom of the deck and play out the another Goku and another Vegeta from your warp, um, which will make it so that if they negate this thwarting swing, they're gonna have to warp two cards now, which is pretty neg for them. So it's kind of worth not swinging with the Marvelous Might if you think that there's gonna be a negate coming. Um, after which point we could figure out what we're gonna use our energy for here. And even if you wanted to punish them even more, you could play a third true fighting spirit before swinging. So if they negated, they'd now have to warp three cards. Um, not a bad, not a bad move. Um, so we play, we swung with thwarting. Um, now I think the next best thing to do would be to swing with our leader and we get a draw off of that. So we see our unison there again, um, but we can bottom deck it with our super combo. So that's fine. After we swing with our leader, then we can kind of start going in with our board. So take a life and you get to give two cards plus 5K, plus 10K for the turn. So we'll give one to a Goku and one to a Vegeta. And now we can swing with these. So we could swing with this Vegeta. This is gonna be 15K. If they say no negates, you take a life and that makes it 25K, which is a lot more to combo out of. And you just maybe put it up to 30 to ensure that the hit goes through. Um, and then you can swing with your leader here on True Fighting Spirit, uh, take another life, make it go to 25. And, you know, just to get rid of Amira and pressure, we can go to 35, bottom deck Amira and draw two. Hopefully we'll see one of our super combos here. No, no super combo, but that's fine. Um, likely that they may have to end up taking that hit. And then if they're, you know, at one life here, you can overwhelm for SS4 Goku beyond all limits. When you overwhelm for him, you get to go through your warp for a battle card that is energy cost between three and seven. So you could grab stuff like Secret ID, you could grab another Thwarting if you didn't have one, you could grab another uh, Marvelous Might, you could grab the Vegeta, or you could grab this Bardock. Um, you can even also grab a Kai Negate if there was one in here, but there isn't one in here. I would probably just grab another Thwarting. Um, uh, I guess we haven't played a Union Fusion this turn, so maybe grab a Marvelous Might, so... Another Marvelous Might here, add it back to hand. This is now all in the warp. Uh, I don't think, we haven't played a Union this turn. So then you can swing with Beyond All Limits. That's 30K. If this is like the last swing, you would just basically combo off your board and combo your hand. But uh, let's say it isn't. So we combo to 45. Somehow they get out of that. And then at that point, we can play another Marvelous Might. Um, gonna take two cards from our warp and put them in our drop uh, here's a, a Vegeta and a Goku and we get to draw for that let's see is it a super combo nope no super combo and then from here we can actually do our Kai effect to play smoke we get to play a unison from our warp by sending Kai to the bottom of our deck so this is technically gonna come into play and then you minus one it put the Kai at the bottom of the deck. And when you do that, you get to look through your deck and see, okay, yeah, we still have oh, one, two super combos there right there. So we're gonna shuffle this up. And after we shuffle it up, we're gonna draw a card and our opponent is gonna warp one battle card from their drop area. So go ahead and cut that and draw. All right, it's fine. And then here we'd swing with Marvelous Might. Say they have no negates and uh, you basically are just gonna dump your hand. And if they're at two life at this point, you have the Chompa in hand. So you can pay one and put the Chompa on it. And then that would be a swing for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 double strike, which is probably pretty hard to get out of after you've applied all of this pressure. Um, so that's just kind of a quick run through just to show you, oh <laughs> look, there's the last life. Kind of show you guys the uh, the ideal play. I wanna show you one thing really quick before I wrap this up here. Um, just to show like a, a hand, basically, if you have thwarting in hand turn one, you're able to mill a trunks off the top of your deck and you have a Goku and a Vegeta in the drop um, and you have a, say one of these guys in hand, like he's in hand or something like that. Um, 
And then let's just grab a couple more cards just to make the play here. So I'm gonna just lay this out really quick just to show you guys how this turn works when you're unawakened. So if you have four and four, if your opponent is at eight life, there's a way to take them from eight to five, which is kind of, I think, one of the best moves in the game. Um, basically, you're gonna open up uh, like this. Say if you're going turn one, this is basically how you do this. So turn one here, we're gonna say we charge a Mira and um, they go ahead and they swing at your leader or something. So they're gonna take a hit on our turn. And then we're gonna draw for turn and charge something here. We'll charge this Deborah. So, oh, I'm sorry. On turn one, actually, you're gonna play this True Fighting Spirit on the first turn and then they hit you. Okay, so now it's our turn too. So uh, we drew already, so, right? Yeah, so charge this Deborah. And then here, Oh, also we would have milled five. Sorry, I'm just kind of rushing through this. Two, three, four, five. Um, so here, let's just fix this warp for the argument's sake. We'll get our targets in here. Just because I'm trying to show you guys the ideal play here. But basically, you have your warp set up here. So you're going to uh, swing at leader, or you'll swing at leader here to draw. And when you swing at leader here, it's gonna be 10, and you wanna combo to 15 to put a third card in your drop. Um, that's gonna put them at eight life, or from eight to seven. And then you would swing here and take the life to take them from seven to six, um, at which point you're gonna uh, play your thwarting, um, draw, and you take these guys and put them in your drop area. Now that you have three here, they're gonna be at six life. You overwhelm, play trunks, and then swing them from uh, six to five. And then you swing thwarting from five to four. And then you can play another Gogeta just for defense. Put these back here and set up your overwhelm for the next turn because trunks is gonna come back to hand. So that's a really good way, uh, basically turn one and turn two to get them from eight to three in one turn. If they don't have the cards in hand, it's actually very hard to get out of. It's difficult for blue to deal with if they don't have any gate. Um, just really, really good card. So, and especially when you play him turn one and they negate this swing, they're gonna have to pitch a card to negate um, this swing off of him. So just very annoying to deal with, um, but a really strong play in Gogeta. Anyway, guys, I hope that helps uh, show some lines of play with this. I didn't really show much with the unison. Um, I don't really like this unison as much as smoke. I just have it in here because this is the deck that won for Euro. I am a dentist, so I gotta end the episode uh, with a uh, dental tooth tip. You know, a lot of people wanna get their teeth whitened and have their teeth like the perfect shiny pearly white, but I think what's cool about teeth is they show your experience, they show your life experience. Obviously, it's nice to have them not look, you know, awful if they look awful, but you don't really need to have the whitest teeth in the world. Um, you can have teeth that are, you know, I have my teeth are an A2, A3, which is like not the brightest shade, but it shows that I've like lived life and I do things. And I think that's nice in somebody's smile for their teeth to show part of who they are. Now, obviously, if the way your teeth look impact your ability to uh, express emotions and share yourself with people, then I think it's worth investing in getting them fixed to a place where you feel more comfortable with yourself and can share your emotional state with people more easily. But if not, you know, and your teeth are just like a little bit darker or something and you feel like you want to get them whitened because that's how like people in Hollywood look or whatever, I don't really think it's worth it. I think it's a lot cooler to have your teeth show who you are. Now it's kind of just my perspective, but um, I hope this helped and I will see you guys next time.